right, guys. <clears throat> it's just another hot, sticky day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, although not quite as bad as it has been. And we are <coughs> now into uh, Tuesday, May, I don't know where the hell we are, guys. May 7th, maybe, I don't know, uh, 2020. So, uh, I'm a little bit torn here in my last week on YouTube. Uh, which channel do I put this on? I think I'm going to put this on both channels. Uh, so, for the folks over here at Collapse Chronicles, okay, guys, yes, little dog, you get that squirrely like that. Uh, <laughs> that dog and, <coughs> and those squirrels, anyway. Um, I am sorry, I already forgot the Alert Tribes member who sent me this story from The Guardian. And this is the single best story about the C word. So if anybody over here, uh, at least at Collapse Chronicles, does not want to hear another Corona Panic Chronicle, shut me up right now and go over and <clears throat> listen to whatever else you're going to listen to. You need to get that squirrely like that. You got the squirrel in the mulberry tree about eight feet above. <laughs> this squirrel loves uh, egging Sancho on. So uh, with, the, with the cheerleading in the background, <clears throat> okay, C word warning. <coughs> All right, from the good old Guardian. Conservation in crisis. Ecotourism collapse threatens communities and wildlife. From Kenya to the Seychelles, coronavirus has dealt a devastating blow to efforts to protect endangered wildlife. Uh, and then they already link you to another story about mountain gorillas. Alright, little dog, I'm sorry. Sancho! No. No barking. Zip up. I need to get that squirrely like that. Come on, little dog. No barking. Anyway. Uh, okay, uh, alright. One more time, coronavirus has not dealt a devastating blow to efforts to protect endangered wildlife. The corona panic has. It is, this has nothing to do with the direct effects of coronavirus on humans. This is 100% everything you're going to read. Uh, has nothing to do with the virus. It has to do with the economic shutdown of this planet. This absolute over-the-top overreaction to the coronavirus. Okay, and now that we clearly understand this, maybe the Guardian does not understand this yet. All right. From the vast plains of the Maasai Mara in Kenya to the delicate corals of the Adabra Atoll in the Seychelles, conservation work to protect some of the world's most important ecosystems is facing crisis following a collapse in ecotourism during the corona panic. Organizations that depend on visitors to fund projects for critically endangered species in rare habitats could be forced to close, according to wildlife NGOs after border closures and worldwide travel restrictions abruptly halted millions of dollars of income from tourism. Throughout the panic, 
scientists have repeatedly urged humanity to reset its relationship with nature or suffer worse outbreaks. But, but, the economic consequences of the COVID-19 lockdown have raised fears of a surge in po poaching, illegal fishing, and deforestation in life-sustaining ecosystems with tens of thousands of jobs in the ecotourism sector at risk around the world. <clears throat> this is Mike Barrett, <coughs> Executive Director of Science and Conservation at World Wildlife Fund <coughs> UK. Quote, it is right, it is right that the global focus now is on protecting human lives in this devastating pandemic, you know, with a mortality rate of about 0.003%. Anyway, however, in the places we work, we are already witnessing its economic impact, particularly in areas where communities rely heavily on ecotourism for their livelihoods, close quote. In Cambodia, three critically endangered giant ibis were killed for their meat in early April following the collapse of the local tourism industry, according to the Wildlife Conservation Society. This is another way of saying when people are denied their uh, their income. If you tell someone they are not uh, allowed to have a job to make money to buy food and there's a giant ibis uh, hanging out next door. A critically endangered giant ibis. You're starving. Your kids are starving. Uh, you are not allowed to eat you are facing starvation and there's a giant ibis walking across your yard. What are you going to do? This is playing out all over this planet. Let's go over to Africa. <clears throat> In Central Africa, measures to shield mountain gorillas from the virus have resulted in a slump in vital visitor revenue. Twelve rangers who guarded Virunga National Park, <coughs> where the gorillas live, were killed in the Eastern Democratic Repo Republic of the Congo last month. Getting back to Bartlett. <coughs> Damn it, this uh, dry hacking cough has really, uh, usually with this dry hacking cough, <clears throat> I just, you know, drink something. But even uh, I found with today with this dry hacking cough that even drinking stuff is, is not helping me. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> quote, it could be years before these places fully recover, increasing the risk that people come to rely on other activities to make a living, putting unsustainable pressure on natural resources. Additionally, it is much harder to monitor land grabbing and illegal poaching. Uh, talking about this in, a, in an article uh, <coughs> yesterday uh, from the BBC, talking about land grabbing in the Amazon rainforest, particularly in these protected reserves. Now, this isn't so much about ecotourism, but these uh, protected reserves from the Amazon rainforest all over the planet where rangers and whatnot are just being sent home. Uh, there is nobody protecting these, and of course, you have the, the direct poaching of our fellow earthlings uh, for the bushmeat trade, but this land grabbing, th th this takes it to the next level about how there is nobody 
uh, there is nobody guarding the hen house. We don't even have foxes guarding the hen house. Uh, you know, guys, and these these deforesters and these miners and all the rest of them pouring in uh, to these completely unprotected, uh, unprotected areas. That's exactly what they are. Uh, okay. <clears throat> While the poaching of rhinos big cats and critically endangered species has continued during the lockdowns, a recent Wildlife Justice Commission report found the, e the illegal wildlife trade had been severely disrupted by movement and travel restrictions, but conservationists fear an explosion of illegal hunting if organizations are forced to lay off wildlife rangers and suspend surveillance programs. Black rhinos in the Okavango Delta in Botswana have been evacuated after at least six were killed by poachers in March alone. Dixon Kalo, chief executive officer at the Kenya Wildlife Conservancies Association said all bookings for this year's key activities such as the wildebeest migration in the Masai Mara had been canceled, prompting difficult choices about staff in Kenya's <coughs> conservancies. Quote, while elephant poaching may not escalate owing to the current suppression of international travel and negative sentiments against animal products in Southeast Asia, demand for bush meat will go up if there is nobody to monitor activities within the conservancies. Poaching for bush meat already existed on a small scale even before the coronavirus outbreak. Now, with more Kenyans out of work, bush meat will be more appealing than meat sold by the licensed butcher. If the rangers have no salaries, how will they effectively monitor human activities in and out of the conservancies? Close quote. <clears throat> Wildlife conservation in Kenya had already suffered a series of setbacks following a devastating locust invasion and a viral outbreak among livestock in the Greater Mara Conservation Area. Kalo said coronavirus will compound the effects on community-led wildlife conservation. Do you think so? <clears throat> Quote, Members of these communities may lose faith in wildlife conservation if there is no money forthcoming. In addition, people who live around these wildlife havens and looked forward to selling artifacts to tourists may resort to other income generating activities such as farming fueling the never-ending human-wildlife conflicts as animals invade and destroy their new farms. All right, let's go over to South, let's head from Africa to South America. <clears throat> In Colombia, the big cat conservation organization Panthera has recorded a spike in big cat poaching with two jaguars, an ocelot and a puma killed in recent weeks. The organization is struggling to fund basic running costs as donations dry up or are delayed. While rangers are forced to stay at home, you know, because of the economic lockdowns, Dr. Esteban Palin, director of the Jaguar program in the region, said he was concerned about illegal land grabbing and intentional wildfires. There's nothing wild about an intentionally set fire. Quote, this is uh, quoting Dr. Esteban Pion, quote, my worst fear 
post-pandemic is that once we go out, we're going to find hectares and hectares of fenced out new farmland where you don't know who they are or what is happening. happening. There is rampant deforestation in Colombia right now in the Amazon. That worries me more than the increased poaching. Why? Because of the scale, size, and speed of deforestation and fires, that destroys habitat. And with the habitat, there go the jaguars. You might not see a bloody animal on the ground with a bullet in it, but it is worse because they're either homeless and burned, burned alive, or they don't have any prey. Close quote. Uh, all right, let's look at fishing. You know, uh, Derek Jensen was talking about uh, how this is good for the planet because global industrial civilization won't be able to get the last fish in the ocean. Okay, what's going on with fisheries? Global Fishing Watch has recorded a substantial drop in fishing around the world with fishing hours down nearly 10% from March 11th to the end of April compared with the past two years. But the drop in ecotourism has also affected conservation of the world's most precious marine ecosystems. Dr. Fanny DeVere, UNESCO's Marine Program Coordinator for 50 World Heritage Sites, including the Great Barrier Reef, the Galapagos Islands, and the Norwegian Fjords, warned of the consequences of the downturn. Quote, we need to be particularly worried about those sites that are heavily dependent on tourism revenues to finance some of their operations. And the Seychelles, for example, Aldabra Atoll is not sure how it's going to continue with its monitoring because it is entirely financed by revenue from tourism. As soon as tourism's, tourism revenues fall apart, a lot of sites cannot continue their conservation or at least part of it, close quote. And then you could go on. I mean, the article uh, wraps up here. And then, uh, but that leads in to the whole next phase about how these uh, economic lockdowns and these travel restrictions uh, are, are completely shuttering. Um, things like climate change research, biodiversity research, all of these studies uh, all over the planet that are dependent upon conservation researchers and, and, all, the, and all that gang uh, carrying out uh, all of these studies. It is, uh, this research it, it is slammed shut and uh, which is going to have knock-on effects for years and years and years. But anyway, I want to thank The Guardian. I, I sent this article to Derek Jensen uh, for his response. We will see if Derek uh, responds to my request for his response to this. Uh, anyway, well, I really do need to get a windshield put in my gas sucking truck today, so I need to uh, get on with my day. I can feel the cool front moving in. Man, what a relief. Bye, guys.